This video is brought to you by Patreon provider Carlo. Lo and behold, it's another Trujicon product. But before I even open the box, I'm very curious to see if this is going to be more reminiscent like the TR24 that I reviewed not too long ago, or the AccuPower 1-4 to I did a long time ago. Why? Simply because Trijicon, I don't think, knows how to make a good 1-4. to What the fuck are you talking about? Watch Hoppelfile's video on his Credo 1-4. to He had to send it back, not once, not twice, but three times to try to get that thing to look as good as it should for the price. Yeah, they're four, five hundred dollars or so, but they still don't hold up compared to a Gen 1 PST 1-4. to That's probably 15 years old or so. So, yeah, Trijicon doesn't have a really good track record with their 1-4s. to And with their first focal plane 1-6s, to well, I wasn't really blown away either. However, this is a second focal plane 1-6. to Those they do a much, much better job with. So, thanks to Patreon provider Carlo, we're going to find out if this AccuPoint TR25 is going to be a shitbird or something that we would be willing to spend our money on. Speaking of money, these come in for around a grand. These being AccuPoints, not AccuPowers, mean that they have tritium inside. Just like the 1-4 to four that I reviewed that had mostly dead tritium. Despite my lackluster review on that, Carlo actually bought that from me for a fairly, I would say, good price and is very pleased with it. So, your mileage may vary about what I experience and what my thought process is to what you ultimately are looking for. However, we both agree that its shortcomings are absolutely there. What does your $1,000 buy you? Well, it gets you a really nice Trijicon box. That's one thing they do extremely well, is make their boxes to a very high standard. Got a little cleaning cloth, a little cleaning brush, got some stickers, reticle booklet, which we're not going to really go over all that much, only because this is about as simple as it gets. Yep, some stuff, some different reticles that come with the AccuPower series. This being a triangle post, it'll be very easy to go over. Different colors and illuminations that come with it. How to reset all the turrets. Well, I guess that's about it. Bikini caps are a very nice touch, which a lot of manufacturers are going away from, sadly. I think they're a really easy and lightweight and cost-effective way of keeping your glass clean whenever you're out in the field. With the bikini caps out of the way, I gotta say, this thing feels really good. It feels really well balanced, and it doesn't feel like it's an absolute pig. Sub 20 ounces for a 1 to 6 second focal plane bulletproof basically LPVO isn't half bad. Starting with the back, you'll see that we have a fast focus eyepiece. This feels like classic Trijicon, as tight as a drum. Good solid feel there. No weird noises except for the anodizing rubbing against itself all the way at the back. Instead of getting to the magnification ring, we have to now look at the illumination control. This being tritium, it does have a half-life, so as this thing gets older, the brightness will eventually go down, but it is activated via ambient light. You have all the way off, which I don't even know why you'd bother having it all the way off, or all the way on. Now, no, this is not the tritium. This is actually a fiber optic tube that gathers the light and then pushes it to the reticle. We'll look at that more in depth as this video goes. However, this, as you can see, spins 360 degrees. and has a really good detent to it. The splining on the outside is fantastic. You can very easy to get a good purchase on this. All the way off, which means the illumination will never come on except for what the normal brightness is on it or all the way open, so any ambient light should help us see the reticle and see the illumination a little bit better. From there is the magnification control, with 1 to 6 being basically exactly 180 degrees, which is standard across all LPVOs or magnified optics in general. We do have a slight little thumb ramp included, which we've seen on many other Trijicon products, and that feels excellent. It does sound like it's rubbing a little bit somewhere on this side, Overall feel is very high on this thing. There isn't a whole lot else to talk about with this thing, really, except for the turrets, which I guarantee you are going to be the exact same turrets we've seen on multiple other Trijicon products before, which are, frankly, awesome. Trijicon surprising absolutely no one with these turrets. These are their standard turrets that they've had on 
almost every other optic that I've reviewed from them. And I have to say, for what they are, they're just really simple and easy. This is an MOA, so we're going to have one, two, three, four clicks per MOA. Really solid sound and feel. And the best part is, okay, I want to re-zero it. Lift, twist, down, done. Same exact turret can be found over here on the windage. And when I mean the exact same turret, I mean they don't even bother going from zero to two to zero to two. It is just the exact same cap that's been lifted and dropped. Feel, fit, and finish are identical though. And these are again among some of my favorite turrets. Very positive click, very positive feel, and it's so easy to just... There we go. Reset to zero. Think of this as a red dot with up to a 6x magnifier behind it. That should be pretty simple and straightforward to understand. With all that being said, let's finally get behind this thing and see if this thing surpasses its little brother, the TR-24. The TR-25 AccuPoint 1-6 to second focal plane LPVO is a tritium-based illuminated reticle with a fiber optic tube on top to allow ambient light to help illuminate the reticle in darker environments. As you can clearly see here, it works significantly better than the TR-24 that I had previously reviewed. Carlo did state that the TR-24 was not 100% dead, but honestly, it was nowhere as bright as what this TR-25 pew, appears pew. to be. However... As you can clearly see, when you get into really dark environments or when you're using a white light such as this, the illumination pew, pew, is pew. basically invisible. It is quite hard to pick up. The only reason why we can see it so well right now is because of those very bright overhead lights. And that's perfectly fine for the current environment that we're in. However, as you'll see throughout this entire video, pew. I will showcase areas where it's not that great. Hopping off the illumination and onto the reticle, Trijkan simply calls this the triangle post reticle. That little triangle Pew. in the middle that is illuminated is 2.8 MOA by 2.8 MOA. What that means is at 1x, this should be roughly the same size as a 3 MOA dot on a red dot, which really isn't that big. Pew. However, on the post, it does look larger. It's one of those optical illusions that I think freaks a little bit of people out, because I know for a fact that some people think that the triangle is just a little bit too large. And they also don't think that's a great aiming point. I, however, am going to completely argue that fact. I think the triangle is perhaps one of the most precise aiming points possible. Pew, pew. The only thing that it does with the rest of the body of the triangle is maybe obscure your target a little bit. Pew, pew. But we'll touch base on that more throughout this video. Now, if you're not a fan of this triangle post reticle, you're in luck. Trijicon just so happens to make a plethora of different reticle options for this 1 to 6 or even the 1 to 4 second focal plane AccuPoint. Now, yes, these reticles do seem a little bit on the simpler side of things. There's no real BDC, there's no real ranging with the exception of the mill dots. There's not a whole lot going on, and you might be disappointed with that. But then I think we're taking this optic and this series for granted. Don't think of this as an LPVO on a modern standard. Think of this instead as a red dot with a 1 to 6 variable power magnifier built into it. When you think of it like that, then it just changes the entire dynamic and concept of this LPVO. What I mean by that is maybe Trijicon designed this thing and wanted this to be as simple and as rudimentary as possible. On a 556 carbine or whatever carbine of your choice, you would pick a zero that would be zero at, let's say, 25 yards and at 250 300 yards depending on your caliber your load your barrel length your velocity your environmentals so in that sense this can be really easy to operate and what i mean by that is just holding center and squeezing up to about 350 yards if you're wanting to do a red dot and a magnifier why not do a red dot with a variable magnifier behind it it's going to work theoretically the same so with that concept in mind let's view this not so much as an lpvo but as a red dot with a variable power magnifier behind it this is, however, a second focal plane LPVO, so as we increase or decrease the magnification, the reticle will remain the exact same size. 
Now you do see the tritium based reticle pretty good here because the ambient light. But when I add a white light on top of it, like so, it gets significantly brighter. So if we are in a brighter environment, it will obviously get brighter. Shutting down the lights and keeping the flashlight on top of it, you'll see again, clearly it gets really, really bright. Take that away, however, and the illumination is going to get very, very dark. I do have to increase a lot of the settings on the camera to even have it be slightly visible. And you might think to the naked eye, oh, this could be really visible, but it's really not as noticeable as I would personally like because it literally just disappears, it shuts off. This is why I'm a bigger fan of just battery illuminated LPVOs, especially in the second focal plane, because you can get them to basically whatever brightness you want on the fly. These are the same great turrets that you find on most Trigicon products, or the Delta Striker HD. They're now, there's perfect. no illumination on this thing, because that target is very bright. Lines up really well, very, very clear glass on this thing so far. And because this is MOA, my mill target, we're just gonna run it real quick. Up 10 mils. Looks like it's favoring the right side ever so slightly, but if we go back to zero, will it reset? Yes, it will. Looks like it might be slightly co cocked. It's a little hard for me to really get this thing perfect down here. Resets to zero right there. Beautiful. Let's give it a, give it a go. Love the turrets on these Trigicon products. Zero's right there. It's perfect. So there we have a bit of a discrepancy. It's going down. The lines back up to zero. Perfect. No, no, oh, there we go. Yeah, it looks pretty damn good to me. Especially considering this thing is going to be set and forget. Beautiful. I've already started mentioning about how good the glass is on this thing, but that should have been very apparent to all of you during the garage clearing. The 1X on this thing is so far very nice, and we are greeted again with a perfect representation of that against these 30 yard power lines. There is very little shift there. There might be the ever so minute amount of fisheye to the center, but beyond that, it lines up extremely well. We also see very little of the scope body, and it really does present us with a magnificent view through this thing. And you know what? Let me make that lift for you a little bit with our first comparison. This is going to be against this versus the Sig Tango 6T second focal plane. That's right. This is about the same price as the Trigicon, if not a little bit more expensive. And they're both theoretically about the same. They're perfect competitors, second focal plane LPVOs. The key differences between these two are going to be reticle choice and illumination power. The differences do not stop there, however. Not only do we have a larger view through the TR-25, but we also have a larger field of view as well, 18.8 feet as opposed to 17.7 feet. It might not sound like that much, but take note of the area to the right of the compressor. There's a lot more space there with the TR-25 as opposed to the 6T. Another thing that you're going to notice once we start looking past 800 yards is not only just how good the image looks on the TR-25 there, but also how good the power lines are at 30 yards. Again, the TR-25 has a better depth of field, so you're going to have more of the image be in focus with the TR-25 as opposed to the 6T. Just a couple things to note between these two. As nice as the image is through this thing, and as little as the scope body as we see, there is one thing that we must talk about, and that's the illumination. With a small flashlight on top, bring a little bit more ambient light on, and you can clearly see it lights up like a Christmas tree light. Rudolph's nose, if you will. And you know what? It looks really good, but you have to have a flashlight on top of it to actually see it. Now, granted, we are in a very particulate environment. We are indoors looking outside at a brighter ambient light than what is currently inside the domicile that we are currently residing in. 
which basically means that there's no ambient light in my apartment and we're looking outwards at an environment that's brighter than the one that we're currently in. This, for me, is one of the problems with tritium because you can't really adjust the overall brightness to it if you don't have ambient light. I like the ability to just crank up a dial if I can and have, boom, daytime bright illumination as bright as possible. And then if you don't want it, you just shut it off or lower it to the brightness that works. Let me also throw this in the mix for you. Let's say it costs you about $100 to replace tritium in an AccuPoint or on an ACOG or any of the Trigicon products that use tritium. Simple as that. It's usually about $100 plus to replace it. And tritium has a half-life of about 12 and a half years. If you don't know what Half-Life is, it's an amazing game series that won Game of the Year, I believe, in 98, and is worth its weight in gold to play, even from the original standpoint. With the flashlight on top, you can clearly see we have great illumination, but you have to have another light source to illuminate it to be able to notice it in these sort of environments. Anyway, let's say it costs you $100 to replace the tritium. It lasts for about 12 and a half years. Now let's say you had a regular LED illuminated LPVO or other optic. And let's say it costs you about $5 a year to replace the batteries. It would then take you 20 years to break even on replacing the tritium once. And after those 20 years, guess what? You're more than halfway down to the second half-life on your tritium replacement, which means you're going to be getting ready to replace the tritium again for another $100. You see what I'm saying? I'd much rather have to worry about replacing a battery as opposed to tritium. And guess what? If you have an LED-based or any of the other fiber dot-based illuminated reticles, if it's from a good company, let's say Trigicon, they'll replace the illumination for free if it breaks because it's covered under their warranty, whereas tritium is not because it's considered something that's going to fail in time. Those are just a few of the reasons why I don't particularly care for tritium all that much for me and my purposes. Here's another one. It's very clearly later on in the afternoon, and in order to see the tritium or the illumination, I gotta put a little ambient light on. Granted, I am flashing it up at the ceiling and the reflective light is coming back down from that and illuminating it, but now I'm bathed in white light. And let's say you don't wanna be seen. Now you're literally projecting a light onto you and your setup and your location. Not the most ideal environment. But if we could touch base on the brightness of the glass on this thing, as we increase it all the way up to 6x, it is marvelously bright. It is gorgeous, just like it has been since the beginning. But I maintain the illumination is still somewhat lacking. Also, think of it like this. What happens if you are shooting in the dusk, like what we're doing right now, and you lose your reticle in a darker environment? Let's say you didn't have that br bright, giant concrete wall right there you wouldn't be able to see it whatsoever. Another reason why I still prefer just battery-powered illuminated reticles. Yes, this can get very, very, very bright if you had an outside source, but for me and my systems and the way I like to use things, this is not ideal. But it might be perfectly ideal for you, and that is why I must maintain that no matter what I say, no matter what I think, you might prefer this over anything else. So know what you want. I think that's more than enough harping on the tritium and why it just doesn't work for me. But again, it might work perfectly for you and it might be the thing that you need in your life, in which case, this is fantastic. But that's the only thing that I can really critique on this optic. Everything else about this optic is absolutely top notch. Just look at the image here at 1x. It's so big, it's so wide and open and everything lines up beautifully. The concrete walls on the side and the black backstop behind the targets. Apart from that, this thing feels robust. Yeah, it's got four 7075 components on it, which is one of the mistakes I made with the VCOG, claiming that it only had cast components and I got ripped apart for it. But I made a mistake and I own up to it. I apologize for being a retard. The illumination here is noticeable only because we have ambient light above us that's at least as bright as what the ambient scenario is in front of us. So that's why you can just make out the illumination. But if you want it any brighter than that, you're SOL. Going on with the rest of the fit and finish on this thing, it is excellent. You really do feel like you can take this off and bludgeon someone to death with it if you had to. Now, it's also true, this is not as heavy as something as, let's say, the Razer HD Gen 2. But just because something is heavy doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be extremely well-built or durable. 
the components that Trijicon uses on all of their stuff is very, very high quality. And just proof positive, look at their track record with all of the components that they've made for the militaries over the years. They don't really have that much of a problem. I would absolutely have no qualms about putting this on a rifle and wondering if it's going to hold up to the test of time. In fact, the only thing that I know that would eventually fail in time is the tritium. Before we get into the eye box, just admire the sharpness of the image that we can pick up 22 LR holes here at 6x at 50 yards. This thing is just something to appreciate. It's a breath of fresh air in what seems to be a ever-revolving door of LPVOs. I'm sure many of you would already assume that this thing had a pretty good eye box given everything that we've seen so far, and you'd be absolutely correct. Because it's second focal plane, you can pick up the reticle and even a little bit of the illumination off in the shadows. But besides that, you have a very open, bright, and forgiving eye box here at 1x. And the good news does not stop there. Even when we increase the magnification here to 4x, we are still given a fairly open eye box. This is great, because if you're doing a little bit of run and gunning, or you're getting in and out of different positions, you can keep this cranked up to 3x, 4x, like here, and still be able to get behind it with a half-assed cheek weld to be able to look th through the optic properly and make a pretty good shot. Furthermore, the reticle doesn't seem to be dancing all that much at 50 yards here. That just goes to show that the parallax on this thing is pretty squared away. At 6x, we're going to have a tight image no matter what the case is, but I still maintain it is much nicer to get behind because we can see where the reticle is when we're off into the shadows. So it does help direct your eye to where you have to go to look through it properly. It's an excellent performance. If you've never been behind a quality second focal plane LPVO, it's kind of hard to understand and wrap your head around how big the eye box is. So to make it live for you a little bit, here we are perfectly at zero. I'm able to move it up one full pixel lot farther forward with no real change to the image. It just looks a little bit smaller. Two pixel lots farther forward, you don't really notice the difference. Even three pixel lots farther forward, you can look through it perfectly. Four pixel lots and we start getting a pretty deep shadow. And at five pixel lots farther forward, we still have a fairly larger shadow, but we can look through it basically perfectly if you're right behind it. It's an excellent performance and something that you really need to see in person to truly appreciate. Talking about appreciation, let's compare this now to one of its siblings, the Credo HX second focal plane. This is got a fiber dot illuminated reticle, which is very bright and beautiful. Again, the nice thing about that is you can adjust it whenever you want. But very similar to what we saw with the SIG T6T, we have a smaller field of view and smaller view through the Credo HX as opposed to the AccuPoint. The difference is on this, it's about four foot smaller at 1x, but miraculously enough, at least on paper, they have the same field of view at 6x. But we still have a larger view through the AccuPoint, so it's going to give you a much bigger view of what we're looking through downrange. It's going to appear larger. So despite the fact these are both at 6x, the view through the AccuPoint should seem a little bit larger and easier to get behind. The image quality on both of these is quite impressive. The lighting from one day to the next was a little bit off, but you can clearly see that on the AccuPoint, the illumination does seem a little bit better. That's because the environments are a little bit brighter, but not all that much. And even though we are under a roof canopy, a lot of the slots that are above us are clear. So whatever ambient light's coming from the sun is going to illuminate it. If you want a little bit more illumination though, I still maintain you're gonna have to go with something that's battery operated. So pick your poison. Also, if you want something with a decent BDC like what the Credo HX has, you got to go that option. Despite the fact that the AccuPoint series has a lot of different reticle options, none of them are as, how should I say, well-developed as what you might find on the ACOG. The ACOG has some great reticle options, as does the Credo series. I don't understand why they don't bring those reticles with the drops that they've been using for literally decades at this point onto the AccuPower lineup. It makes no sense. If you're cross shopping between these two, it's going to come down to what style of illumination, what price point you want to stay in, and what glass clarity you want. But it's up to you to decide which one's going to be best for you. Our last big competitor to the TR25 is going to be the Striker HD, which is ironically going to close out the trifecta that is the Sig Tango 6T second focal plane, the Credo HX second focal plane, and of course the Striker HD, because they all share a lot of the same DNA as far as I'm concerned. I mean, hell, 
the Striker HD shares the exact same style turrets of both the Trijicons. If that isn't proof positive of the DNA sharing between them, I don't know what is. Just like the two aforementioned LPVOs for comparison, this Striker HD also suffers from a slightly smaller field of view at 1x and at 6x, 105.3 feet roughly and 17.3 feet roughly. Whereas this TR25 is claimed 117.5 and 18.8. Again, we have the exact same view through this Riker HD that we've seen in both the other two comparisons. So clearly it goes to the AccuPoint. But again, you might like the reticle options that the Striker offers. You might like the price point that you can get one at. You might like the illumination style. Regardless, both of these, in fact, all four of these that we've talked about are great LPVOs. It just comes down to what's going to fit your bill and what's going to make more sense for you personally. The biggest thing I would take away from all of these is going to be price, illumination, and reticle options. I'm a big component of telling people, hey, find the reticle that's going to work for your setup and run with it. For me, I can make almost anything work, but I'm not really drilling out past 300 yards. And on a 5.56, you're only talking about a couple inch drop. Just hold at 12 o'clock and you'll hit even with the standard duplex. So for me, something like the TR25 wouldn't be the end of the world. It's just up to you to figure out what's going to be best for you. But this TR25 really is nice. It's way better than the TR24 that came before it in every single way, shape, and form. It might be a little bit heavier than the TR24, but that's because it's just a larger optic. And though this does feel really robust and tough, the TR24 felt like a, like a pit bull. This doesn't have that same heft to it. Though the other options that were mentioned here today don't feel as good as the TR25 in some regard. If you're really worried about things that are going to fail, I don't think it would come about on this Trijicon. I think this thing is going to withstand the test of time, again, without, with the exception of the tritium dying eventually. But if you're okay with that, and you like what this thing offers, this is an amazing LPVO. I would run this on a 5.56 with a 25 or a 50 yard zero, be able to have a zero out at 200 or 250 yards roughly, and then just hold center. The one thing I don't like about this reticle though, if you are doing that and you want to extend it out a little bit further, it would be really hard to see where the bullet's going to land underneath the triangle. It's because of that that I'd probably run maybe like a duplex with just a fine center dot, kind of like what Loophole does with their VX series. Their fire dots are on just a standard duplex, and though they aren't that lavish and extravagant, they are brutally functional if you're going to run a zero such as that. If you want to have a BDC that you could find on most any other LPVO, then you're going to have to go in a different direction. You don't have to leave the Trichicon family. You can go with the Credo series, and there's nothing really wrong with them with the exception of their optics really don't look as good as this unless you're getting that Credo HX which does have a more simplified crosshair with a kind of BDC underneath it like we already saw. If you want something more lavish, like, again, their segmented circle on their Credos or on their ACOGs, the glass clarity on those Credos, albeit first focal plane or second focal plane, don't really hold up to this as well. So you're, this thing's kind of in limbo. If you want everything that this thing has, but you want a little bit more of, out of the reticle, you're kind of SOL. And that really, frankly, bothers me because Trijicon has amazing reticles that they can pull from their inventory and throw in this and would just be like, holy crap, you've now transformed this thing even further. And if you still wanted to have this exact reticle, you could have that as an option. Now to answer the question, would I buy this? It doesn't really fit any of my needs, but I can absolutely 100% appreciate everything that this thing offers. From its build quality to its optical clarity to, yeah, the tritium is pretty slick, but it's not something that's going to fit my bill on any of my systems. So I will maintain, if I wanted something that I never had to worry about falling apart, one of these would be probably high up on my list. And this is absolutely optically superior to the TR24. So if you want to get something along those lines, this is the way to go. And I really have Patreon provider Carlo to thank for this, as so do you. So, Carlo, thank you so much for sending this in and letting me see the light. Quite literally the light that we see in front of us through the illumination. And just the light that the TR25 is the LPVO to get from Trijicon. And on that note, thank you all very much for watching. And as always, see you again next time. And a huge thank you to my Patreon providers and my Subscribestar subscribers. Without you, this truly wouldn't be possible.
If you'd like to support my channel but don't want to join either of those, I completely understand. But you can still help by using my affiliate links in the description below, and or like, share, and subscribe as always. Again, thank you very much.